Hi everybody, uh, today I'm going to be doing a dissection of this. This is a white-tailed banded bumblebee, one of the uh, six most common species of British bee. We had a short period of warm weather earlier in the year and then followed by uh, a large cold snap including snow in the last few days. Uh, so it was far too cold for this one to survive. I found it on the way to work um, and uh, picked it up, put it on a flower, came back in the evening and uh, it had frozen to death so I brought it back to dissect it for you guys. Normally you'll see these guys between about March and September, uh, however as said with the slightly warmer weather they can emerge earlier or later if it's colder. Bees are an, uh, part of an order of insects called Hymenoptera, that means membrane wing, it also includes ants and wasps. Many bees, especially uh, ones like this in the tribe Bombini, display eusociality. Eusociality is a caste system within insects uh, where, for example here, there will be a queen attended by uh, maybe a couple of hundred drones and then thousands of worker bees like this one. Uh, the drones will defend and maintain the nest, the queen lays eggs and the worker bees like this one head out to collect pollen to turn into uh, honey and royal jelly. Having a look here at this bee now, you can see a lovely view of the eyes. Uh, these are compound eyes, uh, I've mentioned them in previous videos in different insects, they are a staple of insect evolution. Uh, they also have, as I said, uh, these membranous wings. Flying insects, but especially bees, uh, experience a phenomenon called the chill coma temperature. This will be the minimum temperature at which a particular bee uh, can fly. This varies by species. Uh, the lowest uh, in bumblebees is about 7 degrees C. Uh, it's been uh, minus 1 or 2 degrees Celsius here in the past few days. So obviously these bees can't fly to get back to their nests once they leave them. You can see here the bee's body is covered in fine hairs. These are called seti. Uh, they are used to trap pollen, so the... Uh... Oh, neat! There's a mite! Oh, that's so cool! I did notice past part way through filming this video, you can see uh, in the video here, there is a mite that is laid on this bee. This will be a parasite, and uh, uh, will have been feeding off the bee while it was alive. Unfortunately, as the bee is dead, this uh, parasite will go uh, unfed. Uh, but it's an interesting example of how uh, parasites can affect even tiny creatures. Oh, that's a proper treat, that is. You can see the mites moving along the body of the bee here, uh, now on the abdomen. Uh, the bee's body is covered in fine hairs called CT. Uh, the CT uh, are used to trap pollen within uh, the hairs. Uh, bees have a limb configuration common to all insects, that is uh, two pairs of wings, you can see here and here, and six legs. If I move in with the probe here, you can see quite how fine and dainty this hair is here. Because the hair is so fine, uh, it has a large surface area with which to trap the pollen. The structure I'm particularly interested in seeing and showing to you is the venom gland. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, put a pin through to hold this bee in place, uh, through the thorax, which will leave the abdomen pretty much untouched. I'll then remove the legs and the wings uh, to get a better unobstructed view. I've managed to remove the mite from the bee here. You can see it next to this pin. This pin only about two centimeters long, so you can see how tiny this thing is. Uh, mites belong to an order called Akari, that is an order of arachnids. So these are actually more closely related to uh, spiders and ticks and scorpions than they are to insects, uh, arachnids being chelicerates. These are the limbs uh, that I've removed thus far. Uh, you can see that they are slightly distinct in shape. Uh, these are the uh, CT, these hairs, so the uh, pollen collects on these hairs, as I said. Uh, this is the tarsus and the, the little claw on the end, uh, which I've referred to in my mantis and beetle videos. This is a pretty ubiquitous feature of insects that climb. I have removed the limbs of this bee now. I'm just giving you a shot of the wings here. Uh, these are the membrane wings that are characteristic of order Hymenoptera. Uh, you can see there's two pairs of wings here, uh, the forewings here are slightly larger, the hindwings here are slightly smaller. Uh, you can see they have these vein structures running through them, this allows the bee to heat their wings up prior to takeoff so they can fly more efficiently. This is now simply the main body of the bee with the wings and legs removed. Uh, see the head is at uh, the front here, this is tucked under uh, the thorax and then the thorax in the centre and the abdomen at the back. I'm now going to uh, flip this bee over and work on the underside, uh, both to show you a view of the underside and see if we can access the venom gland and the stinger. Uh, this is now a side view of the same bee. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a better view of the head here. Uh, you can see a nice clear shot of the antennae here. 
the antennae are sensory organs. Uh, at the bee's mouth, uh, there will be mandibles uh, and a tongue-like structure called a ligula. I've mentioned hox genes in previous videos. Hox genes are body plan genes that are prevalent across all walks of life. Uh, you can see here that these uh, abdomen segments differentiate as they get down towards the tail. In the last segment here we have what we're actually interested in. This is the stinger. So this will be a, a needle-like structure the bee will be able to plunge into uh, a predator or uh, something that's threatening itself or the hive uh, and inject the bee's venom into it. It's fairly commonly known that a bee like this will actually die once the stinger uh, enters uh, the thing it's trying to sting and injects the venom. This is because the venom sac is actually located uh, behind uh, the creature's gut. So when the sting enters, the sting is left uh, in whatever enemy the bee is stinging uh, and the venom sac is pulled out of the bee. This causes irreparable damage. The bee won't usually survive. Uh, because bees are venomous creatures, they have what's called aposomatic colouring. Uh, so when you see the yellow uh, on a bee or um, you can get things like red on hornets, uh, but it's those kinds of colours. Uh, that is a warning to uh, predators like birds uh, that this creature is venomous, it will give you a nasty sting, you possibly don't want to eat it. Uh, there is a thing called Batesian mimicry, which is where uh, you get species cheating, so they will display these aposomatic colours like bright yellow, but won't actually invest any energy into uh, developing venom. Um, so they, off the bee's hard work of developing venom, uh, just look, like, look the part and... Uh, get the same uh, evolutionary benefit of not being eaten uh, because they look venomous. Uh, a lot of people, of course, are allergic to bee stings. Uh, the venom of a bee is made up of a lot of different kinds of chemicals. Uh, usually the one that is involved in causing an anaphylactic allergic response uh, is something like a histamine. Uh, there's also things like apamin, uh, dopamine and noradrenaline. Uh, these will uh, contribute to the pain response of the, of the bee sting to make it actually more painful uh, for the thing that the bee is stinging. Uh, so I've now removed uh, the rest of the bee's body. This is simply the abdomen part. I have removed the ventral surface, uh, which is the surface on the bee which will be uh, closest to the ground, uh, the stomach side. Uh, and if you look over here, this is just a fragment of uh, the bee's uh, carapace that I've removed. Uh, you can see, if you look very closely, uh, just about here, there's a tiny droplet of uh, what used to be in the bee's digestive tract. Um, so this will be a sort of a pollen water mixture that's on its way to becoming honey. This is uh, what the uh, bee uses to feed itself, to give itself the energy to fly and go out and collect more pollen. You can see this small cord uh, joining uh, here to here. Um, this is uh, where the thorax would be, this is the abdomen. Uh, this is the bee's gut, uh, the digestive system. You can also see these small hole-like structures here. Uh, I've mentioned spiracles in some of my previous videos. These are the breathing holes of the insect. Uh, these holes connect to the outside of the bee here, and this is how oxygen will diffuse into the bee's body through the tracheal system. Uh, now this is what we were looking for. This here, uh, the sac joined uh, down here to where the stinger is here. This is the venom sac. So this is where all that apitoxin, the bee's venom, is stored. And this is what causes a lot of very serious problems to a lot of people who are allergic to this every year. You can see where this venom sac is attached to the bee's digestive system here. Um, so you can see how uh, this uh, would cause a lot of problems for the bee if this was ripped out from behind this. Uh, fortunately, this bee doesn't have to worry about that anymore. That was in poor taste. I pulled this mass of gut slightly apart and uh, revealed this uh, lovely view uh, of this. I believe this is a Malpigian tubule. Uh, whereas mammals will have a kidney with nephrons, uh, which filters out impurities or toxins, uh, the Malpigian tubules are the analog in insects, which uh, have the same function. So I am just puncturing this venom sac here. You can see uh, quite how much actually uh, pours out and in, is injected into the, the the aggressor when the bee attacks it. Uh, and I will try and access the uh, sting also now. Uh, so you can see how uh, the last segment of this bee's abdomen opens slightly, like a little uh, flap, uh, for the sting to emerge. I've uh, just added another pin here so the, the bee won't re rotate on the cardboard uh, as I do this. You can see this is the very last section, uh, and there's this flap here which opens up. And if I can get this right, I'll be able to show you, under here, the stinger. 
so I have managed to find uh, the stinger in here under this last section. Uh, you can see it is here, this wicked little black pointy thing here. Uh, and either side of this uh, are these little brown sheath bits. Uh, but the thing I'm really looking for for the stinger is this little needle here. Just along there. So you can see that's actually uh, decently uh, decently sized. That's probably three to four millimeters long in its current uh, current state. Um, and probably most of that will uh, puncture into your flesh when it tries to sting you and then pump, as we saw, that big venom sac filled of venom into you. So that, my friends, is why bee stings hurt. So just to give you a slightly different view from the side here, uh, hopefully you can see a little better how uh, pointed and scythe-like that uh, stinger is. So that's uh, the bee's main defense mechanism. So you can see now this is the abdomen of the bee, uh, the dorsal side, with uh, all of the contents hollowed out. You can see the inside of those lovely segmentations. The ones on the dorsal side uh, you can't usually see because they're covered uh, with the CT, the hairs. And uh, over here is a, a final shot. I'll show you this. Uh, this is the stinger here. Uh, you can see the shape of this and how uh, sort of wicked and barbed it is. All of this uh, is the venom sac uh, apparatus, uh, which is used to hold it in place and uh, uh, inject the venom when the bee actually stings something. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I will uh, include a link down in the description to uh, one of my favourite uh, David Attenborough clips. Uh, which is about the waggle dance of bees. Uh, it is how they communicate uh, between each other uh, to find uh, pollen sources and fl other flowers. Um, he can describe it far better than I ever could, uh, so uh, just check out the description for that. Uh, thanks for watching and take care.